Oh, I'm seeing some people dropping in. Good afternoon, everybody. If one of you would just pop a little comment on just so I can make sure the feed is working on my iPad, that would be smashing. There we go. <laughs> thanks, guys. Hi, Fran. Hi, Christine. Hi, Samantha. Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Are you? Yes, happy Sunday indeed, Christine. Morning, Shannon. Alexandra can see and hear. That is always helpful. Hi, Jane. <laughs> Morning, Sandra and Tina. Welcome to the next part of the toucans from Magical Jungle. So you will see it's looking quite a bit different to this time last week. Morning, Liz. Morning, Alexandra. Hi, Kay. Lovely to see you all. Happy bank holiday. Yes, we are off tomorrow, Fran. Bank holiday, Monday tomorrow. Hi, Bunny. But yes, we are off this weekend. Morning, Andrea. So we're gonna continue on with the Toucans page. So as you can see, I've already made a pretty good start on this. I'm gonna show you how to do the colour palettes and techniques that I've already used. And that way you can apply that knowledge to other areas of the page. Page is looking fab, says Samantha. Thanks, it's not looking too shabby, is it? I'm quite pleased with it. In particular, I'm rather pleased with my tree frog. I think he's rather swish. So as you can see, we have a little bit of bling on there because it wouldn't be one of my pages without the bling. So the tree frog has blingy feet and a blingy eye. So without further ado, I'm gonna show you the color list for what we're going to be having a look at today. So those of you that like to take screenshots, now's the time. So this is Prismacolor. I'm just gonna hold this here for a second or two because I know some of you do screenshots on this. I will show you the pencils as we go through. Okay, I'm gonna move it up. There we go. So there are two of the Pentel pens that obviously aren't written down on this colour list, but I'll show those to you. So last little look. Going, going, gone. Okay. So without further ado, I think what we will do is start with this um, orangey yellow colour palette on this leaf. So I'm going to just zoom us in. And I'm going to rotate the page around because it's easier to do it this way around. Just get my little tin of little bits of pencils moved out of the way. So we're going to be going for this one here. So I'll show you the colours that we're going to be using. I'm just going to grab those out of my pencil case. So first up is Poppy Red. Just keep that there for a little second. We also have orange. So again, this is prism color. We have some Spanish orange as well. And some cream. And last but not least, I'm gonna grab the full size one out of the pencil case because the one I'm using is a little shorty. We have some spring green. So the spring green is one of the colours, if you remember, that we used when we were doing the glaze over here on the Inktense background. So this is a way of bringing the background into the foreground of the picture. So first colour up, we're going to be going with the Poppy Red. And what we're aiming to do is a simple colour blend going from darkest to lightest. So I'm just going to get a slightly better... Good afternoon, Michelle. Nice to see you. Gail's here as well. Hi, Gail. So, Poppy Red is the first up. So, what we're doing with this is a colour graduation from darkest to lightest. So, we start from the outside edge of the leaf. And with a very gentle hand, push a little harder towards the outside edge of the leaf. And then where we're going to be changing this up into the next lightest colour, just move to those small circular blending strokes just ease off a little and that's where we'll integrate the orange so we do this all the way around the outside 
just bearing in mind that this shape of leaf is obviously getting smaller towards the tip so I suppose it really depends on how how dark you want in the bottom portion of the leaf here. We can tweak it anyway because what we do is we get this first layer down and then we re-blend over to darken everywhere. So yeah this one has been used on quite a lot of the leaves so I'm, I'm just thinking to myself rather than making you watch me do every single leaf like this we'll show you one and then you guys can take a screenshot of the picture if you're following along and you can see exactly where I've used it and the technique doesn't change it stays the same no matter how big or how tiny the leaf so I'm just going to soften the edges a little and then I'm going to grab the orange pencil there we go just get rid of the residue so that's your first outline in the poppy red and then we are going to go for the orange so this is orange 918 I've actually remembered my glasses today as well guys so I can actually see what I'm doing without needing to put my nose directly over the book it's quite helpful <laughs> So Catherine is currently outside washing the car. So you may hear her popping in and out at some point um, when she needs to get some water and things. She's decided to go and get some fresh air and sunshine while I'm doing this, bless her. So I hope your weekend is all going well, everyone in the UK. I hope you're also off on bank holiday Monday like me and Catherine are tomorrow. There's something really satisfying about a cheeky long weekend. So we're just integrating that orange over so where the pressure on the pencil has changed slightly we merge this into the poppy red colour and then just extend that line in and then keep the pencil stroke the same so we know we're going to be going in with another slightly lighter orangey colour so we just ease off slightly and then we don't have a terrible horrible blend line. What's really saying? I thought there wasn't a live this week. Oh bless. Have I done any more in the book I got from my mum? Um, I haven't, no, but um, those of you that are on my other socials will have seen I've recently finished um, another page from another book by another author and now that that one is done I will be working on that other page this week, Fran. So yeah, I'm getting my colours ready for the, uh, for the cat. I'm going to be working on the cat next, I think. Hannah, had you had your bank holiday on Friday? I was doing work on Friday, but we got a cheeky early finish, which was uh, very, very nice. There we go. So we go into the lightest of the orangey palette that we've got here, so Spanish orange. And we repeat. So we don't start at the edge here. We start a little over into where the orange layer is. This blends everything together. Nice, gentle hand again. And we just extend that in towards the middle. And we're going to introduce a little bit of cream, which is where we're going to pop the spring green layer over. So Liz is off car boot hunting tomorrow. Have fun. I don't know what we're doing tomorrow. I think we may have a date with our Xbox, I think. But I'm planning to do as little as possible. There will definitely be some colour in. So I really want to get this, uh, this page finished. It's a nice, quick and easy one, thankfully. So I'm going to try and colour this slightly quicker whilst keeping an eye on the comments because I've got so many different leaf palettes that I want to show you in this uh, live today. So let's crack on now with the cream. So the cream gives a real nice base layer to transition over the top of this orange and it lets us layer that spring green in without this going a really funky colour. So I'm going to go ahead and add a nice firm layer of the cream, just over blending that Spanish orange layer just slightly. And then we're going to do the green last. So what we're going to do now is sharpen up all of the darkest colours. So from darkest to light again, going back to the poppy red. So I usually colour and blend like this anyway. I very rarely will only go in for just one layer of any kind of colours, particularly if you're doing a graduation like this. If you go in for a second go, you can just sharpen up the colour slightly and it just makes it pop a bit more. So 
reasonably gentle hand again, but the same blending motion. And you'll notice that I'm holding the pencil this way rather than this way. We're not glazing over, wanting to saturate it with a decent amount of colour. So we put the pointy end down rather than using the broad edge of the flat area of the tip because it's a different kind of colour technique that we're using for this one. So what's Sandra saying? We have Labor Day, three day weekend coming. Oh, nice. So this is our last bank holiday over here in the UK now until Christmas. Apologise to anybody who I've offended by saying the C word in August. Some of us are looking forward to Christmas. <laughs> I'd always ha quite happily have it Christmas all year round. But yeah, for us bank holiday wise, this is the last one until Christmas. So we just ease off slightly and then we go back on with the orange again. So back to orange. And the same again. So we just go from where the poppy red layer has kind of stopped. Reasonably firm pressure on the pencil here. Just wanting to blend that in a little bit. I've got a slightly harsher line than I would have wanted there. It happens. Samantha has next weekend off. Excellent. Well, I've actually got a cheeky half day next week on Thursday because I'll be getting ready to uh, to speak to Johanna live in group. Very exciting. If a little nervous, but very, very exciting. And back to Spanish orange again. And then we can just layer this over slightly into that cream layer and just pull everything else together. So this will work really with most ready, orangey, yellowy combos. Um, this is quite a simple um, one to do, really. And then we are going to add a little pop of the spring green in. So I'll show you the full size one because I'm using a little dude. So in fact, I'm not going to um, mess about with it. I'm going to stick it in a pencil extender because it's just uncomfortable. There we go. So this is just a little Derwent extender. I did buy myself a generic uh, multi-pack of extenders from Amazon. I've got about 12 of the things, but I much prefer just using this Derwent one and just popping the little pencils out and as and when I need them, because it was clogging up my pencil case. So there's lots of ins and outs with these pencils. There we go. So looking forward to next week. Yeah, me too in a very nervous way but it's nervous excitement which is good <laughs> so let's keep the book this way up so I'm just going to give you guys a look so you can see where the orange palette is going to go from this side of the page which I've already completed so I've used exactly the same technique for all of these leaves including this one so of course I've shown you how to do it there so it's just a case of reproducing it in other areas so what we're going to go for now is this jungly leaf here. So we'll spin this round slightly. We may do a couple of these because you've got a couple of different shapes here. So I'm just going to get out the pencils that I need. I'm trying to be a bit more organised because my desk ends up looking like a pencil apocalypse. I'm not sure how long it's going to last that I'm looking organised. We'll see. <laughs> I think it's going to last very long. So we want this one, this one. Uh, chartreuse. It's only three colours for this one. Hmm. Okay, let's get a decent tip. So, the first colour that we're going with is the Prussian green. So, I'm just going to give this a titchy little sharpen. I did empty this sharpener before I came on air. I really didn't want a repeat of the pencil shavings landing everywhere. That was a bit awkward, weren't it? <laughs> Still haven't forgotten about that. <laughs> So Prussian Green, again, for those of you just who are in, we're in Prismacolor, Pencil Apocalypse, yes, indeed, a Pencil Apocalypse. Now, the basis for this technique actually comes from a Chris Chen that I did many, many moons ago when I was first learning how to blend Prismacolor pencils. So if I show you, um, I don't even know if it was in this book, actually. I think it was this one yeah this page here so if I show you this was a Chris a Chris Cheng that I did and this technique is what I learned on these leaves 
and it's really versatile you can actually change colors and do di very different things so this is definitely Chris Chang inspired but it's my own palette if that makes sense I like your tiny desk hoover yeah he's kind of cute I like my desk hoover as well it's very helpful so what we're doing with this one is we're working from the outside edge in and we're using linear marks for this one so we go to the edge of the shape and use these lines as a guide really for where we're placing our strokes so you can put these anywhere so some areas you might only put a little bit of the Prussian green in other areas like this one you can bring the uh, lines up a little bit higher if you want to but we basically do this all the way around the outside edge of the shape so I'm rotating the pencil there to make sure that I keep the sharp edge on the book because it's much easier for these kind of um, linear decorations on leaves. Just be a little bit more careful as we go into here because of course I don't want to um, contaminate the orange section with this. So I will be rotating this as I go around, it's just easier. I'll just nudge a tiny little bit of it into this bit as well. And then we carry on on the other side. So when I'm doing things like this, I have to have the book a certain way. So there is going to be a little bit of uh, a little bit of spinning around going on, which I can only apologise for. Some people can uh, colour whatever, keep in the book the exact same way. I can't. I am always rotating them round, which is why I get them spiral bound. So it makes life so much easier. Oh, thank you, Michelle. Michelle says they're all beautiful. Very kind, thank you very much. So I hadn't done any planning for this part of the page and then Friday evening we were watching the latest season of Superman and Lois, which I'm absolutely loving. In fact, we finished it um, yesterday and um, I just started playing around with colours. So this one is, is quite loosely planned for a page for me, but um, it reduces the old stress level. Sometimes I can't quite think what I want to put where. Hi, Yana. Hello from my wonderful deck this morning, she says. Did I miss that or did I did or not? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Maybe I did. Maybe I vaguely remember there being a deck somewhere. So just nudge this all the way into the edge. Now, there'll be some areas where you haven't quite gone to the edge with the Prussian green. It doesn't matter because we're going to be doing more layers of this anyway. So we're going to go straight into the second lightest green for this one. So I'm going to show you the big guy because my little dude's still in the extender. So we're going into spring green now. So into spring green. Fran always rotates too. Yeah, me too. Hello from Gatesville, which is central Texas. Wow, hi in Texas. What time is it there with you? Good morning, Beverly. So we're going to repeat what we've just done. We're going to overlay the um, Prussian green. Not all in the same places again. So some of these little areas where you've left little bits of white in between will pop a bit of that spring green in. And it's the same pencil strokes, so a reasonably soft hand. Just making linear strokes in towards the middle of the leaf, leaving some white air space there in the middle because that's going to be where the overblend layer goes. I can't get my words out today. And I didn't even have that second coffee girl that we were talking about on chat earlier on. We were talking about different coffee blends and what we're all drinking at the moment. So my favourite time of year is here with um, the pumpkin spice lattes that come out. So we've just bought some uh, pumpkin spice syrups and I've been enjoying that. And all the chat was making me want another coffee early and I was saying I'd best not because... What comes out of my mouth could be uh, even more random than normal and I can't get my words out as it is anyway. <laughs> there we go. So that's our first two layers. So of course this is exactly the same leaf that we're working on. Now what we do is we do a blend over layer. Now those main colours are down and then we go back in with the Prussian green. So we're going on with chartreuse now. So again, this is one of the colours that we added a little bit of the highlights with, if you remember, when we were doing the glaze over layer. So it's another way of bringing the background to the foreground of the picture. And when we overlay, 
put a bit more of a heavy hand towards the centre here and then we just gently glaze backwards and forwards and what it does is it smushes those three greens together and then gives us a surface that's already blended to go back in and add some detail on the top. I like the beanie ones, says Liz. Is this coffee we're talking about, Liz? I haven't heard of the beanie ones. If it's syrups we're talking about, we're using the Jordan Skinny Syrups from TK Maxx's. Absolutely beautiful. So I'm going to do this to the whole thing. So just smushing those colours together. You can see it preserves all of the lines that we've made underneath and then gives us another another little surface to work with. So I'm going to do this all the way through. So medium to firm pressure with this one. And we keep the stroke in the same direction. So where I've made all these initial marks going this way, we were to start shading this way it's going to um, basically degrade all of these lines so when you're doing the blend over on this kind of leaf we keep things going in exactly the same direction as the first layer of pencil strokes that you've put down so i'm going to try and be a little bit careful under here i have a feeling that we may end up with an orangey chartreuse area just trying to be a little bit careful so I'm not pulling the pigment from that poppy red into the leaf whilst it wouldn't look horrific and it's not really the look I'm going for so just brush that residue away now what we do now is go back to the darkest color again which was the first one we used here the Prussian green and we're just going to redefine our lines so you can probably see the difference between the Prussian green on this one and how this one has looked so this will be the final layer on this little guy so I'm going to go just to the side here just be a little teensy bit careful what I'm doing with this bit it's very difficult to um, negotiate your way around when you've got leaves that you've already done here what Sandra's saying Starbucks has started a line of creamers I think you guys do have creamers over in the US, don't you? Those little um, pots of flavouring, if I remember rightly. But pumpkin spice is one of my very favourite flavours. So, um, yeah, I'm very, very happy that Starbucks over here should start doing it. I'm thinking probably from early next month sometime. Highland Grog, says Yana. That sounds like an interesting blend. <laughs> So I'm just making sure that we've got the Prussian green right to the edge of the leaf and then very, very gently just using the marks that I made on the first go around the edge, just redarkening them, extending them if there's anywhere where I'm not quite happy with where they landed the first time. But just making doubly sure that we've got that Prussian green right into the edge and we haven't got any of that white paper lurking around the edge here. I'm going to just swizz this round to do the other side. Might have swizzed that around a little bit too much for this side bit here. So you don't need to press very hard when you get to this stage because we're already now blending through between two to three layers of the um, wax pencil. So the colour will just glide on. Where I'm putting this into the edge, I'm pressing just a little bit harder. Just to make sure that we've got a nice dark edge at the side here. So we keep this going all the way around. So what I'm going to do is the flower next because a couple of the colours that I've used on the flower is what goes into the middle of this leaf. So we'll dot around a little bit. I'm doing my very best to keep an eye on this screen so if I'm missing anybody I'm really sorry I will scroll back through the conversation a bit later on this evening once we've had dinner and I've got the uh, video uploaded to YouTube of course. So if you see me reacting to things that are happening right now, it's just me reading back later on. There we go. So again, I would just zoom out real quick and show you where we have. So this um, jungly leafy thing is what's gone into these guys here. And also this guy down the bottom. So 
this colour palette is repeated in other areas so I probably won't do more of these with you this evening just because we won't get a chance to see other things so yeah it will be repeated so let me zoom back in I'm just gonna have a quick sip of my drink I feel like I've gone gravelly again let's see what's everyone saying Alexandra's waiting for eggnog oh, I can't bear eggnog I think you're either on one team or the other and I'm definitely team PSL <laughs> Too early for autumn, hot in Canada. It's cooling off here now, Josephine. We've had a relatively cool day this last couple of days, which has been a real treat. Oh, that's better. And Liz will be very pleased to hear that I did check the corners above and below my desk before I came on to make sure that there were no arachnids. <laughs> I really can't deal with the stress of having an eight-legged vagabond in the corner while I'm trying to do this it's a bit stressful <laughs> oh dear oh dear can't bear it right I'm just going to double check on my swatching list I'm sure this is crimson red but I just want to make sure because I've sharpened the name off of this one because it's got so short so I'm just going to check the number it is crimson red so we're going to go for the flowers so your first colour up is Crimson Red, so this is 924. Get the goggles back on again. And um, this is exactly how I've done these two guys here. So we'll start with, uh, with this one at this side. So following the little black lines that Joanne's given us in the drawing to start with, this is kind of a similar pencil stroke to what you've just seen me use on the jungle leaf with the Prussian green. So we're pressing just that little bit harder at the top of the stroke and easing the pressure off on the pencil as we come down. It's kind of like a flicking motion. So going nice and gently, so we don't want to over pigment the uh, petals at this point. Well, that's really hard to say, over pigment the petals at this point. Did quite well there. Haven't even had another coffee yet. So I'm just going to nudge some of this down into the petal so shape so just vary where you put in these lines they can be as much or as little as you want depending on how much of the red you want in to show through how much of the pinky color that we blend out with so less is more so we go nice and gently on the first go and of course once we've blended we're going to go back into uh, to sharpen these colors up anyway So yeah, how many of you guys are following along with me? I know a few of you have um, put some works in progress pictures up. So have we got a few of you that are following along sort of after the session or using these palettes for another page? I've seen, um, I think somebody's using this for the chameleon page and I think somebody else is using it for the hummingbird page, if I remember rightly with what I've seen over the last few days. So keep rotating around. Just uh, nudged into the leaf there. I'm always doing that. Me, says Bunny. Me, me, me. So are you following along on this page or are you using it on a different one? I think Catherine, Catherine Chinoy, I want to say, is using it on, I want to say the Hummingbird page and has done a heart shape, I think. If I'm remembering rightly. Right, Suzanne, put these green pencils out for the road because we're just about to have another apocalypse. So we are blending over, this is blush pink, so 928 blush pink. So friend says, I've done it in this page already, but I might do it on another page. Good, Andrea's on this page. Josephine's going to do it another time. This is good. So we're going to do a blend over. So as we did with the chartreuse, we went backwards and forwards in the direction of the pencil straight. We're just going to do exactly the same on here. I'm going to follow the direction of the pencil stroke and over blend the whole thing. So this smushes down that layer of red, fills up the white area of the page really, really nicely. And then we detail over the top. Oh, yes, Bunny, I remember your 30 days of creativity. You'd almost done an intense rainbow, hadn't you? Um, I saw that when you posted that the other day, it looked lovely. Alexandra likes to chat during the live. I know, I don't think um, if I was watching somebody colour live like this, to be fair, that I would be able to follow along at the same speed. I much prefer to re-watch and then pause and 
and join in with the conversation. I'd probably get so much more done actually if I stopped looking at my iPad but that would be really rude because we would just not be chatting at all which is part of what I enjoy so much about these sessions. But yeah, we'll be obviously be having a very, very, very big chat on Thursday with uh, with Johanna. I'm gonna pop her a little email tomorrow and just make sure that everything's still convenient because of course she's got the girls to think about. So I'm hoping that there won't be any hiccups. And um, yeah, front of camera time, <gasps> which um, I, I really don't like front of camera <laughs> at all. Not good, but it's um, it's well worth it. So we just do exactly the same on all of these. And then um, what I'm gonna do is go ahead now quickly with that scarlet red again. So back to the 94 color. And remember me saying some of the flower colors were gonna be reused on the jungle leaf. So I'm gonna go ahead and just add a base layer down on here. It's just block colour with a nice light layer of, uh, of this one while we've got the pencil out. These flowers are gorgeous, says Josephine. Thanks, they're not too bad. Um, but I can see a few of you saying that you're going to use these um, leaf palettes and things on other pages, which yeah, definitely go for it. That's the whole idea. So if you do use them in other places, tag me in so I can see, because I do love seeing them. It's what keeps me motivated to keep going. Just getting rid of that pigment before I drag my hand through it all. So we're going over the existing marks that we made before. So like with that jungle leaf, you can just about see a ghost of, of where those lines are. So you can go a bit more gently now because we're working through another layer of uh, wax where we've blended this out so you don't quite need as much as much pressure the pressure will come on the dark lines which we're going to do in a second looking forward to the new book says Liz yeah me too I don't know which um, page I'm going to colour first I think it may have to be the owl post office because that one spoke to me when she showed the sketch of it or the sewing room. I've already got the sewing room here from that event that we were at um, two or three weeks ago. But I just haven't started it yet because I've been busy on a few of these other bits and pieces. Oh, that's uh, pigeon friends flying into the back garden there for a drink on the bird baths. Oh, and flying back out again. Sounds like they're gonna fly into the house. We did have that the other night, you know? Absolute chaos. We were sat watching the telly and um, got the French doors open behind us and a um, blooming blackbird flew in and had a tour of the lounge, landed behind the sofa. And when I went to uh, retrieve her and put her back outside, she just fluttered her tail at me, ran along the back of the sofa on the floor behind it and then bombed back out of the door. I was like, help yourself, love. <laughs> So I'm really hoping we don't have like a pigeon visitor. That would be uh, annoying. <laughs> Need to start a journal, says Liz. Definitely. Let me just scroll back because I can see the comments have been going ping, ping, ping. Love that. Yeah, I love the lost and found page as well. Alexandra, can we private message you the picture? Yeah, sure. Of course you can. That's not a problem. Do you think she'll do a full flip through? I don't know, Josephine. Um, I... I don't know which format the live is going to take at this point, um, whether it will be interview style, because I've got lots of sort of topics and questions to discuss, or whether she'll show us some of the pages from the book, stuff like that. And to be honest, um, I'd like it to be a bit of a surprise. So even if I do find out between now and then, I'm not going to tell you. You'll have to just wait and see. So black grape is the last colour that's going on. So we'll just finish up this jungly leaf first. Oh, hi there, Ray. I am using Prismacolor today, Prismacolor Premiere. So with this one, we're going to start from the outside edge of this middle area and push reasonably hard over the top of this red. And then the same blending motion that I used on that orange leaf. So we start a little, little harder pressure towards the outside edge of the shape. And then as we get in towards the middle, we use off a little bit just to feather out that line slightly. Oh, Gail, I haven't said chocolate for you yet, have I? I must remember to say chocolate for Gail before I go. 
Gail loves it when I say chocolate. I have no clue why. <laughs> I have to make sure I do it every live though. So back to the scarlet red again. Just going to blend that out very slightly. There we go. And then back to the black grape. The way I say it's magic. <laughs> it's the age old thing of as Brits love your accents over in the States and Canada and vice versa. <laughs> right, there we go. So this is just another way of bringing those colours together into different areas. So you can see I've just used a white pen to dot over. So I may do some of the dotage. It just depends how far we get with the rest of this. So I'm going to do one of these petals to show you and then I'm going to move on to a different area so that we're not um, losing out on time. So still with the black grape in my hand and starting at the very edge here. So I'm going to push a lot, lot harder because we've got three layers of wax we're going through now. And then we're just going to bring little lines down from the outside edge into the centre. So I'm just making sure that I've got that black grape all the way to the edge. And then you can have as few or as many of these lines as you want, really. So this is a different alternative to um, like using a black or something over the top. So this black grape's a really nice colour to sit over the top of pinks and reds. There we go. And then I will obviously be repeating that for the rest of the flower as well. I love it when Suzanne says my name. Oh my God, you like it when I say Alexandra. <laughs> That's so cute. <laughs> Hi, Michaela. So there we go. So I'll obviously be repeating that for these other petals here. I'm just not going to do that right now because you've seen me do one. I don't want to sort of waste any of the time that we have together because we have other palettes to do. So the middle of this one here is in Pentel. So it's the dual metallic and that is in gold. And all I have done is block colour this bit here also used this of course for these little fronds under here i've used it for his eye and for this little curly whirly thing at the end here as well there we go so let's do something different um which one are we going to do now let's do the blue and the pink leaves that match up with this one so let me just have a wee look at my list i can't remember what i did with these guys olive green so we're going to be going with olive green as our first color up hi shell Ooh, says liz i know sparkle time time for a tune so the technique that I'm showing you for um, these pink leaves is exactly what I've done with the blue version. So I'll try and do one of each again just to show you. So th these are what I've coloured these flower leaves with here. But I'm going to show you in the interest of time the single one that I've done up the top here. So with this olive green we're using this as a bit of a base colour. So we're going to just block colour the stem here and the middle. And then following the direction of the shape of the leaf, we're just going to start flicking some of this colour down. So similar to what you saw me do with the Prussian green again, it's the same pencil stroke. So you'll see it's a lot darker here and it tapers out slightly. That's because the pressure I'm putting through the pencil is changing. And we just bring this around right down the center line here and then we can sharpen that up and then we're going to do exactly the same on this side let me just move this down a bit I've just realized the camera placement of that was shocking so do the same again so i'm just disregarding these little shapes and and kind of doing my own thing over the top of them i do do that with some of these leaves and things i just find it much easier than sort of worrying about what color i'm going to do these little middle bits so we just do exactly the same again here. So that gives us our base layer. Let me just get this blush pink and crimson red out of the way. And then what we're going to go straight into now is an overblend. So what I have here is 
this is grey green light so grey green light so this is number 289 have a little a little dude again that's going to need to pop into here oh gail i know i was i sent gail a message on our admin team chat this morning saying oh my god we're at 30k i can't believe it and she was like no it rounds us up i was like oh no i was proper pouting and everything <laughs> but we're very 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 nearly there so grey green light we're going to do a simple over blend again so again following the direction of the stroke of the pencil I'm just going to nudge this into the very edge and then just blend this back and forth in the same direction of the pencil strokes that we've just done. So reasonably firm pressure on this. You don't have to have a terribly sharp pencil to do this because we're kind of glazing really. So sometimes having a pencil that's a bit more blunt is actually a lot easier. So we're just nudging that all the way over. The olive green layer and you can see it just dolls that out very slightly so all that we do is go back in again with our olive green and then sharpen up the darker edge here so exactly the same pencil stroke now this will sit really nicely on top of that gray green light layer you just have to put a little bit more pressure through the pencil because of course we've smushed the uh, the layer that came first, we've smushed that down as we've blended out. So we just put a little bit more pressure through now because we're working with slightly more, more waxy stuff to have to put this through. So those of you that have been following me for a while will know that I like to bring colours from my flowers and things into the leaves because it's a way of making the page really nice and cohesive. So all that we're going to do is take the lightest colour from this one, which is the blush pink, so 928 blush pink. And what we're going to do is introduce it to the edge of this leaf. So I'm just swapping out my pencil extender and then we just go into the edge over the top of that grey green light and you do exactly the same pencil stroke back in the other way so it just gives it the smallest little hint now because this is quite a pale pink you're going to have to put a reasonable amount of pressure through this to get it to go into that grey green light that we've used so i am pushing quite hard you'll see i've got the pencil right down on the page keep swizzing this round slightly so you just match the stroke the opposite way so instead of doing this with the olive green we are flicking the pink back up to meet it and just keep rotating the pencil so that you've got a nice sharp edge down. And then if you want to um, go back and just re-darken some of this, introduce a little bit of that green over the pink as well, you can do. I'm just going to give this a small tweak in a couple places. As well as the pink, I just need to nudge that into that edge bit a little more. So I could have used the crimson red um, on here as an edge to the leaf, but I figured it would be a little bit um, a little bit too strong, I guess. So I'll show you um, how to do this one now, which is exactly the same. And then I'll show you where the, the pink ones are going. Can't stay today happy colouring. Thanks, Shell. Take care. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Just having a sip of juice. So the principle for this one remains exactly the same. So back on with the olive green again. So I'm going to bring that all the way down the centre line. And we have some little markers here to give you an idea for the direction of the pencil stroke. So I'm just going to go ahead and follow those down. So you just vary the length a little. So reasonably firm pressure on this one. Try and get a little bit more co coverage of the green down on this layer. Then you can see where it's starting to taper off. So we just slightly change the pencil direction there. And then the same again on this side. 
So I'm rotating the pencil a lot just to keep the, the sharper edge down. So this is, was another way of bringing another one of the colours that I've used on the background into the foreground of the picture. There we go. And then we're going to go ahead again with that grey green light, just swapping out the uh, swapping out the colours here. Not wanting to go back in the pencil extender, are you? So I'm just going to take a spare piece of paper and just make sure I don't have any pink remnants or anything on the end of this one and then let's over blend and I'm just going to leave the smallest little white edge at the side here for the brighter colour which I'm going to put through so just blend over kind of two thirds really of that olive green for this one so I've just blurred the edges here and then another of the colours that we used on the background is parrot green. Michaela, need to go. Um, have a good Sunday, Michaela. Hopefully see you on Thursday. So parrot green. So you'll, you may remember that we used this parrot green over the top of this kind of area here. So it's just a way of bringing this into the picture. So I'm going to do exactly the same, go into the very edge of the leaf, get a nice um, sort of thick covering at the edge and then just do the same pencil stroke but kind of back to front so you can just take this over into the little layer of grey green light that we've done there this will sit really really nicely in there let's just make sure that we've got in fact there's a little gap in there which I should have coloured in with the ink tents probably chickened out I didn't want to put my water brush in that tiny space you know, sometimes notice these bits when you go back and you're doing these things at the ends that you've actually missed a whole area. So the same on this one. Just make sure that we get a nice strong coverage of this colour at the very edge of the leaf. And then we do the same again. So the same pencil stroke and just flick that back. pull this right into the edge here there we go and then we're going to go in for another go with our olive green oh I saw a little heart somewhere that popped up thanks guys whoever that was and we just um, sharpen all this up again now so you can just pull that olive green back over the grey green light and just sharpen this up from kind of the middle outwards I guess there we go I think I've stunned you all into silence. The comments have dropped off again now. <laughs> you guys all making notes. There we go. Let me just darken that up slightly. There we go. So if I um, turn this around and zoom out so I can show you where we're using these ones. So the pink palette that we've used here is of course what's going to do these leaves here in the middle but we've also brought it down into this little area of leaves here so it's just a very 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 mini version of this and of course this one um, is going to be the same here so we've got those two on the opposite sides as well so I think what do you want to see next guys you want to see the tree frog or these leaves wait for suggestions you can tell me what you want to see and then I'll know which pencils to grab what do you want to see first tree frog or leaves just while I uh, get my ducks in a row again what are we thinking frog 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 says everybody yeah that's cool we can do the frog I'm just thinking actually I might need to get my um my other dark green pencil out of the pencil case because I've got another shorty which is okay but when you're trying to teach with a shorty it's not massively helpful so I'm going to just grab the big one tree frog have you decided on the toucan yet I have Fran um but I'm too much of a chicken to do this one on my own and wait a few days to then teach you guys this one so I will teach you guys and then re-watch my own video to remind myself what I did 
like <laughs> isn't that pathetic but that's what's going to be happening <laughs> right colors for the little froggy dude so we have some dark green she says frantically looking at her list we have some chartreuse as well just get these guys into uh, my pencil case some yellow chartreuse and then for his tummy we have some dahlia purple and we have some powder blue so let me zoom in for this little dude here we go fairies just reminder is the video i know it's I thought because I'm going to be doing a lot of blending on this guy and I'm going to frustrate myself because I won't remember how I've got, done that one which means that one isn't going to match. I was like no. We'll watch her own video because that's the easiest thing to do at this point. Getting on a bit you know memory span of a goldfish. Oh here's Catherine. All clean? Yes. Does he look lovely? Yes. Is he sparkly? Yes. She's cleaned the car. You look a bit pink. Do you need a drink? <laughs> no. You look a bit hot and bothered. Right, on to the tree frog. So, we're going to go in with the dark green first and then blend it out. Gail says hi. Hello. <laughs> so does Liz and Alexandra. Oh, and Fran. <laughs> hi, guys. I'm just about to make some coffee. Woohoo. Something pumpkin y for me, please. Okay. Okay dark green going in first she says just eyeballing the little guy on the left hand side so we're gonna have the lighter edge around his back here so let's get adding some of this dark green in so really really gentle again with this one because it's such a strong color so i'm just trying to see kind of where i've put the darker areas on this little guy from the other side I had half an eye on the uh, Superman and Lois last night while I was colouring this frog, which probably wasn't the best plan in the world, was it? I have to make a hot chocolate to match, says Fran. <laughs> yeah, she's just gone upstairs to um, take the rough, uh, rough clothes off. She's been out car washing, bless her. So she'll be down again in a couple of minutes. It's just going to sort of plot out really here where we're going to put the darkest areas and go around his little... And his little armpit here and then very little gentle circles just taper off on this blend line and we're going to do similarly to what I did with that orange leaf I'm going to go in for a couple of couple of layers for this little guy here so it's easier to go in gently and then add a bit once we've blended some of this out so I'm going to just put a little bit of the darker green around this side as well. And then let's do his underbelly area as well. So he's going to be nice and dark underneath his arm here. And then so I had a lighter edge that side. See, this is the problem I would have had with the toucan. I would have been thinking, how the hell did I do that? So far, far better to have a simple a simple thing like this uh, this little froggy because he's already um making me clench my teeth very slightly i mean he probably isn't going to match 100 percent and these things never do but i want it to be as near as damn it so we'll see so if i miss any comments at this point it's literally just because i'm concentrating on what i'm doing with this little dude here so let's get a little layer of the um, darker green onto his arm so very 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 gently and then on his leg as well so against this little frond that he's sitting on would be a little bit shadowy and then we'll go in between these little frog toes as well and then I think what we'll do is we'll just have the gentlest of layers on here and then let's do his little hand and his other little leg mocker says Liz you know Catherine loves a mocker but I really can't get my head around having a mocker I don't know why I 
think it I, I for me it either has to be chocolate or coffee not the same thing don't know maybe I, maybe i need to try and start expanding my taste horizons slightly i don't know so again just down these little toes these little dudes are so cute so i'm just having now a critical look at the edges here because i want to just soften these off as much as possible before i get the next color going on just so we don't have like a harsh blend line so that will do so i'm going to go on with the chartreuse now so it's a three color blend for greens so we're going for the mid-tone now josephine's making a morning cuppa now i keep forgetting some of you guys it's um it's morning or early afternoon where you are it's what are we five to five in the evening here now so i'm gonna nudge this into that dark green layer get them really nicely blended together and then where we're going to have a bit of a highlight on his back just do the same thing just ease off on the pressure a bit there to leave ourselves with a bit of white airspace here at the side we do the same with all of him so you'll start to see little areas where the dark green is a bit darker than it needs to be. We'll correct all of that once we do the next layer over. Just going to bring this uh, chartreuse colour all the way up around his eye. And just over that little eye socket as well. Let's get his arm blended now. Isn't he cute? I really enjoyed colouring this frog last night. I really wish I'd paid more attention to quite what I was doing, but so far so good. So take this all the way over. Again, apologies if I'm uh, missing any comments. I will look up in a little second once I've done this little bit. So let's get his leg. So it doesn't matter at this point if you colour over any of these little uh, circles because we're going to be hitting that with some sparkly pen. So I'm not being sort of as careful with what I'm doing down here. There we go. Just get rid of some of that residue. Super cute frog. Thanks, uh, Liz. What's Fran saying? Don't drink coffee usually. A hot chocolate with a tiny bit of coffee instead i don't know maybe um maybe i should start maybe it's me maybe i should start to investigate these uh these things gail i really don't like frogs but this guy's cute it's really cute unless you stand on him gail but let's not have that conversation again because that will gross you out big time <laughs> there's a story behind this isn't there gail um yeah so yellow chartreuse coming on <laughs> i actually don't mind frogs gail you don't like them at all do you <laughs> So we're just going to add this where we want the uh, the highlight down his back to be and around the top of this little leg. And then we're going to go in and correct any of these little areas with the dark green now. <laughs> it was a hell of a story, wasn't it, Gail? <laughs> oh, it was a good one. So dark green coming on. Just hid the frog in the potting shed. <laughs> oh no, back to potting sheds again. Uh-oh so dark green so this time i'm going in with a much much gentler hand and all i'm trying to do is smooth out now any areas of this pigment so we will go in with the chartreuse again to do another blend out but this is just where we get the darkest areas that we're wanting and just tidy things up a little bit from that first uh, from that little first go that we had so around his nose he's got like a He's got a patch on his nose at the moment, so let's just blend that in a little bit more. And along his mouth line as well. And I will go underneath. So this is going to be a sparkly pen, so I've had a bit of a wobble there, but that's okay. He's so cute. So with this one, I'm going to... Just change to a slightly linear strike on this little dude's arm. Just pull that colour down slightly. And under here as well, this is where he's sitting on this uh, this vine. And we'll just 
change the uh, the stroke slightly on, on here just to give his leg a bit more of a, a shape and again I'm sparkly dotting uh, these little bits down here so I'm not too worried about the fact that I'm dragging green through them at the moment and then let's blend out underneath his tummy here as well how cute is he looking rather dapper so just make sure we go for another little little bit in between these toes i think that should come down a wee bit more underneath this arm there we go Alexandra's laughing, make sure Stickman doesn't find him. It's funny actually because um, what I'm using to hold my uh, pencils at the moment is one of our ladies sent me this. It's a pencil case. Look. <laughs> and that's, I've got the lid of it just now, which is what I've got my pencils in. So on to chartreuse again. Honestly, that potting shed's going to be infamous, isn't it? It's going to be a thing. So again, I'm just going to blend out now the dark green slightly. Just smush all these green areas together now. Up around his eye. Again on his leg. So we've got, you know, several layers of, uh, of wax going on here now. I just get everything blended together. He's really psychedelic, isn't he? I love this colour combo together. I might use this colour combo on that other image with the, the cat that I'm doing that we were talking about earlier on. I think that would be um, quite a winner. So I'm going to try and see if I can get this Dahlia Purple through the Dial 133 because the last time I tried it snapped. Which is quite frustrating. Oh, really? Let's not go there. I've got bits everywhere again. Let me just check if that tip is actually gonna stay sound. Oh hallelujah. Right and we want some powder blue so that's 1087. Let me just get my little dude sharpened up and in the pencil extender. This is uh, the one that I'm using at the moment so you can see why I'm needing to put it in here. That is so cool. What's cool, Alexandra? What are we talking about? A psychedelic frog. Why is there a line under there? I don't understand why there's a line. Maybe there's like a bobble on one of the bits of... Um, let me just see if I can get some of this dark green to go into there. I might just actually have to live with it. I don't know, but it's like a line. How bizarre. I'll tweak that later on when, when I've finished. So, a little bit of Dahlia Purple, the pencil case and the frog. <laughs> yeah, the pencil case is very, very cool. I love it. So, with the Dahlia Purple, we're going to do this little dude's underbelly. So, you're probably thinking, why, Suzanne, in the hell have you got a green frog with a purple underbelly? Easy answer being, I didn't know what colour to do it, so I went back to the colour wheel. So last night when I was watching telly, I was umming and ah in here whether these are yellowy greens or greens, and I decided they were more on the yellowy green palette. So all I did was have a look at this thing, and it said complementary colours were red-violet. And I just went from this to my Prismacolor swatching chart and pulled Dahlia Purple. And I know that powder blue makes a really nice overlay, it gives it a really nice colour. So that's why my little dude has got a purple and blue underbelly. So we're going to go from um, this side of him being the darkest. So we're going to do the same again. We're going to go from these little edgy bits here, which would be the darkest bits. Hi, Elisa. Just got in from work. This is looking stunning. Thanks. It's not looking too shabby, is it? I'm quite pleased with it myself. I wanted it to be really like sickeningly bright. That was my, my remit. I wanted it to be really, really bright and colourful. And the reason it's got so much orange in it actually is because I, I used the colour wheel for that as well. I was like, well, I've got this dirty great big blue background and I never do backgrounds first. What on earth am I going to put with it? And um, 
yeah, orange is complementary to blue according to the colour wheel. So that's why we've got quite so much orange running through here. So we're going to take this purple pretty much most of the way to the edge here. And then with the powder blue, so this is the new one that's ready to go. Oh, thank you ever so much. Lovely, what have I got? Pumpkin cheesecake. Pumpkin cheesecake, thank you. Just have a little swig of my coffee. Whoa, that's lovely. Mm -mm -mm. Yum, 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 yum. So with the powder blue, we are going to smush all of this together and extend it to the outside edge of this little frog. So work from the darkest bit and merge these colours together. That is so nice, you'd like that one, you know. Reminds me of your caramel cheesecake one. It's delish. <laughs> so you're gonna pinch it and have a swig, seriously? <laughs> She's just half finished my caffeine. That's not reasonable. <laughs> Phantom coffee sealer. <laughs> she just waggled her eyebrows at me and left the room. Honestly, stealing people's caffeine. <laughs> Your coffees sound like desserts. It's just the syrup flavour and it's so, so nice. So back to Dahlia Purple again. And we're just going to do the same as we did with those other greens. So nice soft hand now and um, we're just going to re-emphasize the areas of this little dude where we want it to be a bit more purpley and this sits really nicely over the top of this um, powder blue layer it keeps it nice and psychedelic which is really really good so just pop a few little linear marks because he's got these little bits down here as well So he's looking nice and uh, nice and bright and cheerful, isn't he? So do the same under here. So nice and gently with um, with this, you don't have to push too hard. And then I'm just going to use the powder blue again just to soften everything over. Just this like blend line here. So just stay in the same direction that we've applied the pencil. And just blend everything out. And I'm just going to take my glasses off and have a proper look at this. Let me see. Oof, it's not too bad. I've got more of a highlight on him, I think, than his other pal. Maybe need to darken his leg up slightly as well, maybe. Which I'm just going to tweak him now while I'm having a look at it. Sometimes with the way that the light shines as well under the desk lamp, do you see how you how you get this glare on the wax? How these areas here are shining so sometimes i end up tweaking things once i'm back off air again because it looks kind of i'm having to sort of like sit back and uh, and stoop to be able to see um how this guy looks so i'm just going to uh just tweak him very very slightly without the specs <laughs> Yeah, your underbelly mister is looking reasonably unblended. Let's just soften that line out as well underneath there. That's a little bit better. I'll tweak him a wee bit later. Hannah loves coffee. That your dog, um, Sandra, steals your coffee as well. God, that, that kind of thing wouldn't be tolerated in this house. Oh, I love dogs. You're not allowed to steal my coffee though. It's sacred. <laughs> So a little bit of black pencil now and all I'm going to do with this is um, just go over his mouth and just around his arm and just add in a little bit of black because you lose a little bit of the line art when you're, when you're doing this so you need to add the shadow back in. There we go. And then his eye, I'm just wondering if I can do his eye now. 
No, because I'm probably going to drag my hand through it. I'll show you the colours that I've used for his eye and this little dude's um, spots and his feet. They're just Pentel ones again, so we've already used the gold on the flowers. So I'm going to do his eyeball in this uh, gold one. And then this is out of the, um, the pastel range. And this is the light violet one. And that's um, what I've used for this here as well, if you see. So I'll do that later on because I'm just going to drag my hands through it all while it's um, still wet, which is not going to be um, good. So we only have one more um, leaf flower palette. Flower? Leaf flower palette? Suzanne, drink more coffee, seriously. Leaf colour palette to do before I've shown you everything that I've done. Let me just unzoom slightly and <laughs> have a sip of my coffee. It's all gone to whatnot. <laughs> caffeine needed when you're no longer making sense it's time for caffeine so final palette is going to be we start with parrot green so let me get some of these other ones away that i don't need i need that one that one um yellow chartreuse is there and dark green again okay here we go so I'll show you um, the colour palette for these ones and what I've also used for the, the vine here. What about the birds? The birds will be next time, Hannah. The birds probably won't be today unless we have time because we're at 10 past five just now. So I've probably got about 20 more minutes with you guys. But yeah, that'll be on the next one. So parrot green. And what I'll do is I'll show you a little bit of this um, vine as well. So I'll show you this. A leaf this way first and then I'll show you one of the other ones so same pencil stroke as I've done with all of them really with the parrot green we're going to follow the direction of the leaf from the midline leaving plenty of white airspace for blending so nice and gently just vary the length of the stroke you can have more or less really it depends how you want it to look and her hand is like, oh my god, you've, you've left the toucan white. Was that deliberate? No, we might do the toucans next time. I don't want to rush um, the birds. So I may even um, pop and do the birds tomorrow. I may do that. Let's see how the lands lie in. So that is the first layer. We're then going to do a blend over. So this time we are going with cloud blue. So this is 1023 cloud blue. So the same again. Let me just blend almost to the edge there and leave ourselves with a little bit of white at the very edge. But we definitely blend all of this parrot green. So you just keep the stroke in exactly the same direction. There we go. And then we're going to go in with the darkest green colour now. So dark green again. So we're just going to block colour the stem. And take that all the way up to the top. So the leaf just underneath this one will be done exactly the same way. And then we go from the midpoint here and nudge some of this over the top. So just vary the stroke. You can keep some of the parrot green showing. We're gonna do a bit of a blend out with it again anyway, so we're not gonna lose all of this nice parrot green color. Just rotate this over slightly. But yeah, um, the toucans, you can see the amount of concentration I had to put into remembering how I did the frog last night while I was watching telly. So yeah, what I'm going to do is do a toucan live with you guys. And then I'll probably re-watch my own video to remind myself how I did it. How bad is that? See when you hit this over 40 luck, your memory just um, 
It's not what it was, people. It's just not what it was. That's why I have notes everywhere. So I have a half an eye on my tablet. I've got notes literally just sitting this way. <laughs> Do you remember how I've done this stuff? How bad is that? So back to the parrot green again. So parrot green. I absolutely adore this colour. It's so nice. And what we're going to do is just very gently almost do a sort of semi blend over of that dark green layer. But again, just leaving a nice light edge at the side here. So we will go back on with that dark green again in a second. But we're going to make the edge of this leaf look really funky now. So we grab the yellow chartreuse. So of course we've used this in other places. We put it on a little froggy, used it in the background. And we're going to do the same overblend that we did with this one, but over these colours here. So we push hard on the edge and just drag this back. Just all the way down. So this brings the colour of the background in the centre of the picture into the foreground and it brings it to the edge of the page so it just helps it to look a bit more cohesive. So we just blend everything back, get rid of any pigment and then go back to our dark green again. And this is where you can just sharpen up the darkest areas from the middle here. Just make sure that you've got as much or as little of this as you like. There we go, that's a bit better. Beautiful. And then we're going to use these same colours for um, this vine and also these leaves down here. So I'll show you a leaf first and then we'll do the vine. So going on with the parrot green again. So we do exactly the same as I've just shown you, but it's just that the leaves are a slightly different shape. So what I've done, when I've done the ones on the other side here, I've kind of disregarded the fact that there's these little marks under here and just use them really as kind of like background decoration, I guess. Because otherwise I get bogged down with, well, am I colouring this as a frame with a middle bit or what am I doing? So um, for me, I just find it easier to kind of disregard them. So same pencil stroke, kind of loosely following the shape of the leaf, I guess. It's a little longer in the middle here. And just taper everything off. So exactly the same pencil stroke as I've shown you on most of the other leaves. We've got more pressure going from this side of the stroke to this side of the stroke. So I'd nudge this around the corner here. So just have to rotate the book slightly to get the angle that I'm wanting. So I'll show you one of these leaves. So there must be something underneath. Do you see that line? It's coming through here. That's really bugging me. What is it? I bet it's a bit of, oh, that's what it is. It's uh, coming off of this <laughs> where I've used the gouache underneath. Oh, never mind. One of the pitfalls of using a textured medium on another page because of course you feel the lumps and bumps as you move through the book so we're just going to live with the fact that there's a line through here it will bug me but i'm just going to live with it <laughs> so we're going to go back on to our cloud blue and we do the same again so we over blend in the same direction. What's Alexandra saying? It's amazing how many colour combos there are for loops. That's the thing. Um, people get hung up, um, myself included, when you're colouring and you are confronted by a page full of leaves because, of course, your brain defaults to, well, this leaf should be green. And then you realise just how sick to death you are of colouring leaves green. And then you start dodging pages that have got loads of leaves in. But I just think... They can be whatever you like. Um, so you'll remember the page in Wells of Wonder I did a couple of weeks ago. Well, my leaves were blue. 
um, and I was quite happy with that and it kept me motivated. I didn't want to see another leaf again as long as I lived because it was quite a, a leafy sort of a page but you can do any colour you like on leaves, um, you know, any colour you like and I think Magical Jungle being such as it is, it gives you a good excuse to go crazy because it's a jungle book so, you know, you can have slightly crazier colours in here because you know the, the name is in the, the title of the book isn't it that's the, the biggest hint just untangling my feet from my phone wires that nearly ended badly <laughs> so back on with dark green now so we're going to make sure that we've got a nice coverage of this around this little dude's feet and then same again so we pull the green down same stroke, leave as much or as little of that parrot green showing as you like. You can create a nice linear feature along a leaf if you choose to use gouache underneath. So this is how to do that. She says growling slightly in her head with frustration. <laughs> Look at that. For goodness sake, I don't know. There'll be other pages actually in this book that I bet will do that because I've done so many beach scenes and water scenes in this book and I use gouache on them all the time, all the time. Let's do the same with this side. So I'm just going to feather that off a little more. So I'm going to go ahead and blend out again with Parrot Green. I think I've stunned you guys all into silence. Have I stunned you all into silence? I must have done. So I'm just going to extend that down. Because of course we need to leave a nice little pop of white at the edge here because that's where we're going to introduce that nice yellow chartreuse colour to really make it pop again. There we go. Can you put a thicker piece? Yeah, probably could actually, friend. In fact, I normally do have a work, like a working piece of card or something underneath. I really don't know why I didn't do that. Um, but yeah, it's just going to be an interesting feature, isn't it? Because <laughs> of course, if I push hard to try and get pigment into that line, it's just going to make it look worse. So I'm just going to leave it well alone. So back to the yellow chartreuse again and we just blend backwards so a little firmer pressure here towards the edge of the shape and you're kind of doing the same stroke really but in reverse so blend over the edges here it's almost neon looks really good so when I did the, the leaf at the top yesterday, I'd actually left the white edge and I decided that it looked really, really dull. And I thought, I'm just going to put something yellowy on the outside edge and see what it does. And it just went, I was like, yeah, that was a good move. So back on with the dark green. It's a ray of sunshine, says Fran. Let's go with that. Yes, it's a ray of sunshine. Or it's light from this little dude's very sparkly eye, or it will be very sparkly when I've finished with it. So we're going to go ahead now and just darken any areas really that you want to darken. So I haven't quite gone in around his toes there. And this centerpiece here. So these are the two leaves um, nearby done in exactly the same way. That's looking good. I'm liking this. I'm liking this one a lot. So let's do a wee bit of vine together, shall we? So that you know how to do this. The page is truly lovely, says Yana. Thank you. Off to the pool. Have a lovely, lovely afternoon in the pool, Yana. I'm very, very jealous. Right, small sip of coffee. Oh, my days. Look at the time. Please don't boot me off. You know what this um, Facebook malarkey can be like. So I'll just show you this bit of um, vine under froggy. So still with the dark green we put the tiniest little bit along the bottom edge here so very gently then we go back to our parrot green 
and again really gently take this almost to the very top here very nearly and then we are going to grab our cloud blue so it's a similar technique to what we've just done but this is a dark to light color blend and we start at the top here and we just blend back into all of those colors and it just smushes everything together real nice and then we go back to the dark green to darken up the very bottom. It's a nice gentle hand because it's such a small space. And then we clean our pencil because where I've already been blending with this, the tip of it's kind of mucky. So I'm just going to get rid of... Um, the pigment because otherwise it's not going to be as light as I want it to be. So the yellow chartreuse are just going to make it pop. So we just go ahead and overlay the top of these colours here. And then if you're wanting to get sort of a bit more fancy with your shadows, just grab a black. I'm just in a couple of these little twiddly bits where it would of course be a little dark, more darker underneath. You can just add the smallest little pop of black and then it just gives you more contrast between the lighter edge basically. So let me show you this page because I'm going to love you guys and leave you guys very very shortly. So let's finish Mr Froggy off and then he can be drying while I'm having my dinner. So we're going to go with the Pentel in Gold. Did you Kipling bag from Amazon Warehouse come? Yes it did. We got a Kipling bag and a pencil case, which was uh, pretty good. I'll show you the pencil case. I'll grab it in a second. It's just behind me. So I'm just going to dot this around. So once this is dried, I'll use the black pencil just to redefine the dot of his eye. And then, of course, this really nice purpley coloured one. We're going to sit this on his little leg spots. So this will sit nicely over the, the Prismacolor. You might have to kind of dot it on a, a touch to get it to sit. There we go. I love his little belly. He's so cute. It's this Dahlia purple combo with the powder blue over the top. It's really, 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 really nice um, on flowers. Don't put it on your book. Yeah, we'll shift the book out of the way. Can you imagine? I've also got a liner and a splodge. You know, that would be a low point, wouldn't it? But I'm not going to do his little fingers here. I'm going to wait until I've done the vine in case I wobble about and disturb the pen. So I'll leave that alone. But what I might do is just pop the, um, let's pop the purple onto this top leaf up here. And then you guys can have a little look at the page, screenshot it if you like, for those of you that are following along. And then you can see where we've um, used these palettes. So I've shown you all of the palettes that you need to crack on with this page. Um, as Hannah's pointed out, the only thing we haven't looked at yet is the toucans. So we'll see how we go. If I have some time tomorrow, I may even um, speak to Gail about popping on to get the toucan finished with you guys tomorrow. Because um, I don't have many days left before I go away. So time at the weekends are going to be a little bit more pushed over the next weekend or so. And um, what I don't want to do is uh, is put a live in for next Sunday and then end up having to cancel it because I've, I've kind of run out of uh, time. So, um, yeah, Gail, if you're still around, is that cool with you? Potentially pop in another stream in to do toucans tomorrow? Sunday is normally my day, you see. right glasses off so there you go you can see where we've used all of these palettes and it's just a case of reproducing them which you guys can completely do so the next time you see this page um if you know this evening i will finish the rest of this off and we're just going to be left with these dudes. So the white dots um, that you can see plenty of. Um, my new favoured white pen are these Jelly Roll in a size 10. 
sits really really nicely over the top of Prismacolor and if you put it over pink it doesn't turn a funky colour unlike Uniball Signo. So yeah lots and lots of dotage, lots and lots of sparkle. So let me just show you this pencil case real quick and then I'm going to love you guys and leave you guys for today. Oh. She says reaching behind her. So the pencil case I have on the desk at the moment with all my bits and bobs in um, which I will show you, let's just shift this out of the road, is, is the same. So this is, a follower sent me this, so this is my, my project case. So it has um, lots of slots for your bits and bobs and all of your, your tools and stuff that you use. Pencil apocalypse, because I've been live. <laughs> so I got exactly the same one again. And this was from Amazon Warehouse Deals. Um, retails at £38 and I got it for £17. So slightly better colour I, I feel for um, using your pencils with because it's darker. So as you can see you get the elastics for your pencils to go in. And then you have a nice section underneath to put all your bits and bobs in. So these are really good for project cases. So yeah, um, this was 17 quid. So it was an absolute bargain. So that's the pencil case that I bought. So yeah, I'm gonna love you guys and leave you guys now. So the next time we get together, we will be doing the toucans and I'll get the rest of this uh, finished off tonight when I've got my eye on the, te on the television. What's his name? Oh, the monkey's name. Let's have a look. I can't remember. Ah, uh, his name's Don. And that was the name of my grandfather, my mum's dad. Don. So yeah, that's um, this little dude, isn't he sweet? And then on the pink one, what's my monkey called on this one? Lobka? Lobka? I don't know how you pronounce that. But yeah, this is the pink version. So one of my followers sent me this and she sent Barbara the same one. So we have matching pencil cases. How cute. How cool is that? So yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed that. Any of you that are using the palettes for other pages or you're following along or using this on another page, tag me in, let me see. If you're feeling shy about posting it, you can send me a message, that's fine. I'm happy either way. And the next time we meet, we'll do the toucan. So I'll have a word with Gail and see if she's cool with me, perhaps popping on for an hour or so tomorrow and let's see if we can get the bird done and then I'll probably do like one bird and then I'll go and do the other bird by myself by re-watching my own video <laughs> so yeah I'll hopefully see you guys again um in maybe tomorrow and then of course we'll be live on Thursday with Johanna so you're not too late to submit questions if you've got any ideas for questions things you want me to cover you can um, pop a post under the event that's in the events tab within group. There's also a pinned post at the top of the group or you can send me a direct message. I'm collating a list of them at the moment and going through because obviously some of them are duplicated, but I will put as many of them to her as possible on Thursday. So thank you for your company this evening and uh, I will hopefully see you again very, very soon. So I'm going to love yous and leave yous now. So I'll give you a last look at the tree frog just because he's beautiful <laughs> and I'll see you again soon. Take care you guys. Bye for now.